This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Hi everyone. Um, I did get notification that Dan Buttrick is not going to be here and neither is Melissa Cody. Someone has to be the chair. <laughs> is Julie up for it tonight? I can be. Melissa said that she thought you were on deck, but I'm happy to if, oh. if you knew me too. Why don't, why don't you do it tonight? Sure. Not a problem. Are we ready to get started? Do we have quorum? I believe that this is everyone in terms of commissioners that I was anticipating to be here. And I can see that the person for our first item is here. So I think we are probably good to get started if you guys are all ready. Great. Sounds good. Um, all right. So do we have the statement that we need to read, Cassie? Can pull it's it on up. the agenda, isn't it? I can pull it's it on the agenda. Yeah, it's that thing if you have it. Otherwise, I can pull it up. Yeah, that's on there. Okay. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, as extended on June 15, 2021, with the governor's signing of Senate Bill Number 2475, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the East Hampton Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found below. Every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best, best efforts, we will post on the City of East Hampton website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Should an interruption occur in which the meeting ends abruptly, the meeting will not be restarted and all agenda items will be automatically continued to the next scheduled meeting. So it is 6.01 and I will now call to order the March 28th, 2022 meeting of the East Hampton Conservation Commission. Are there any public concerns or non-agenda items? I have not received any. Um, and I think everyone that I see here in attendance is here for an item that I'm aware of. So I think we're good. All right, moving on then, uh, public hearings. We have first uh, public hearing continued from March 14, 2022. Notice of intent filed by the Lathrop Community Inc. at 100 Bassett Book Drive, map 104, lot 202, or lot two for improvements to existing trail network, mass DEP file number 1510315. Yep, again, requesting to continue to the next meeting, which is April 11th. I'll make the motion to continue to April 11th at 6 p.m. Do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Ryan? Aye. Whittemore? Aye. August? Aye. Motion carries. So that will be continued. Uh, our next public hearing is for a notice of intent filed by Berkshire Design Group on behalf of Investment Real Estate LLC at Main Street Rear, 9 Coleman Road, uh, Southampton. Is that it's correct, Cassie? Main Street Rear um, in East Hampton, and it's 9 Coleman Road in Southampton. South okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, map 164, lot eight for additional self-storage buildings with new stormwater management system. This is Mass DEP file number 1510319. Do we have someone here to speak for this item? We do. Hi, my name is Doug Searle. I work with Berkshire Design Group um, and I will be presenting uh, on um, uh, real estate investments behalf. Uh, thank you for having us this evening. If I may share uh, a screen, Am I able to do that? I just gave you the, the ability to do that. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Um, uh, if that's all right, I'm gonna uh, pull up a presentation if I can get it here, uh, which I think will be this screen. All right, um, are you guys able to see this? Um, it's an aerial image so far? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so, sorry. Uh, all right, thank you very much. Uh, so this uh, uh, 
Uh, first image here is an aerial photo uh, showing uh, the uh, lot um, of uh, Nine Coleman Road. Uh, the uh, area uh, here along where I'm moving my mouse here is Route 10 uh, and then uh, Coleman Road running north-south. Uh, the area that is in the solid uh, yellow line is the uh, parcel 164 uh, dash eight uh, that is located in East Hampton and uh, second sort of part of the uh, same parcel is located in Southampton. Uh, it's approximately 4.6 acres that's located in East Hampton and uh, the existing use is uh, for move-in storage uh, and it contains a series of storage units. The point of access for this site is uh, off of Coleman Road and it is uh, currently, I believe there is an easement there because it is overlapping with property that is for this bank slash Verizon uh, commercial building here. Um, this next slide is just showing a series of existing images of the site. Here's Coleman Road here in the first upper left is the driveway headed into the site. There's a fence in the distance. Um, and this same curb cut and entrance is not gonna change for the site. Uh, the next slide uh, top right is just showing further down in Coleman Road from the Southampton side, just looking up at the existing facilities in the area of mowed lawn and the area of, of taller grasses, which are where uh, wetlands exist. And on the bottom left, uh, again, is that entrance drive in uh, and showing those facilities and showing uh, the security gate uh, for the main entrance. And also that lane is shared for the entrance into the bank. And then uh, looking in from Main Street or Route 10 uh, in the bottom right, uh, you can faintly see behind the Verizon building on the backside of the Verizon building is where the, the bank is located. And uh, that's where uh, behind those facilities, you can see some of the storage units there. Uh, the next slide, this is showing the existing conditions that were surveyed from the site. Uh, so there are currently nine uh, buildings on site uh, that are part of the storage facility. Um, again, with the shared driveway of this uh, bank building uh, that is located here. Um, and uh, this dotted line that I'm moving my mouse over right now is um, the 100-foot uh, wetland buffer from the wetlands that were uh, delineated by Ward Smith. Um, so there's no work that's proposed within the wetlands themselves, but there is work that is proposed within the 100-foot buffer. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so moving into our proposed uh, plan, what is proposed is seven new buildings um, and an expansion of the uh, parking lot there, um, an improvement of the security fence around the site, and um, uh, four parking spaces. So again, this is Coleman Road, and the entrance uh, off of Coleman Road, there will be four new parking spaces, one of which is for uh, employees that this new expansion will uh, house an office space in the southernmost building. Um, and then the remaining buildings are, are just additional new storage buildings located here uh, and uh, here. Um, off of uh, going to the eastern portion of the site um, uh, within uh, East Hampton, the drainage for this location is uh, headed, is uh, to catch all the surface runoff, is headed into a retention basin in this location, um, which uh, is uh, within the 100 foot buffer, but still outside of the uh, wetland boundary. So everything is uh, that was needing regrading was done outside of the wetlands. And then I'll move to the Next slide. Okay, and so that is it so far. A uh, couple of things that I would like to point out additionally, um, uh, in the current condition, the there's not really good locations for where snow gets pushed. Um, currently it is pushed outside of the edge of the buildings here and uh, through the south to the buildings here. So the way that's been improved, at least across the uh, town line and in Southampton, there's a bump out uh, here 
where uh, the fencing is pushed out uh, outside of the asphalt uh, pavement in order for snow plow to be snow, snow to be plowed in this location. And on the east end of the site, uh, it's uh, hard to see uh, off of this map in the slide, I'm sure, uh, but the fence is uh, pushed out towards the uh, edge, uh, outside the edge of the asphalt for this to be a location for snow storage. Um, the fence is improved around the entirety of the site for the sake of security. And uh, any additional lighting is only wall packs on the buildings themselves. There's no exterior pole mounted site lighting that's proposed for these new facilities. And it's my understanding that the site lighting is um, to be run on uh, solar and to be connected to a timer so that the facility itself closes at 10 p.m. So anyone that is renting space has a key card um, access uh, through the gate at the main entrance, but they, they don't have 24 seven access. So their access would, the, the facility would be closed uh, to those uh, folks as well at uh, 10 p.m. And so the lighting would turn off after 10 p.m. Uh, to try to minimize uh, lighting of the site. I think there's some existing security uh, lighting that is there now that runs past 10 p.m. Uh, into the evening for the purposes of security, but there's no additional new lighting uh, added for that. So that's that's all I want to say. I wanted to now open it back up for questions. I have so a go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Jay. Oh, when was the delineation done? Uh, the delineation was done. Um, uh, Fairly recently, it was just reflagged by uh, Ward Smith, and he had just submitted a letter to that. Which, um, to be fully honest, I was just shared this letter about a half hour ago um, by Jeff Squire in our office. So I haven't actually read the letter from Ward Smith, but it but it outlined, and I believe Jeff had forwarded that on um, to Cassie and I think to the entire commission. Um, I received that letter today. Um, I put it in the file folder. It's the only Word document in there, um, and. I didn't receive any like additional data sheets or anything, just the, red, the letter um, just from Ward describing, or you know, Wendell Wetland Services, uh, Ward Smith is the, is the scientist, but he uh, uh, describes, I can, put, I can share it actually now if you want, or you can share it, Doug, if, you, if I don't know if you have it. Um, sure. I can stop sharing here if you'd like to share that. Yep, hold on a second, let me pull it up. I have a copy of it here. Sorry for my uh, lack of ability to answer. The, it, it, uh, in the, looking at the letter, it was originally flagged on February 26, uh, 2020, and was re-flagged. Um, uh, it, it says here in the letter that the, uh, the entire wetland boundary was walked and the vast majority of the wetland flags that were still in place, including all flags that were close to the project. Um, and this letter is dated on March 25th, 2022. So he had recently walked just before that. Do we have copies of the uh, BVW delineation forms? I don't believe we do. I think that's something that we'll definitely want to see, um, particularly since you did this when there wouldn't have been any vegetation. It's not ideal, certainly, to flag wetlands in the winter. Um, sure, so I'll be nice interested now. to see what he's um, using as the, the markers since vegetation is key in Massachusetts. Um, I'm wondering, okay. too, do you know, Doug, it, is there an existing um, boundary that that is the limit of mowing that's marked in any way are there is there monumentation from the original development or do we know what where the why they mow to the to where they do and then stop that's a good question and i don't i don't have a good answer to that right now i'll have to get back to you i can potentially speak to it it's just that where the vegetation crops up and isn't getting mowed it does seem like that where it is where the topography drops off so it might just be where they're mowing where it's flat I don't know if that's officially like the plan, but that seemed to be what I was seeing on site. 
Um, would that potentially make sense, Doug? Or it it does make sense, and I, I feel like that would be my same answer. But I don't have a clear. Um, I feel like I, I'd like to give a more proper response that it's based on a particular distance from uh, the wetland boundary, and I I can't speak to that. So um, I think it's I think it's mode out of out of convenience as to where the topography is and where it changes and the soils get wetter. I think is where it's no longer being mowed, but I I couldn't speak to the current practice. Okay. If you could get us some some more information um, on both that and the delineation forms, that would be helpful. Sure. Um, do you know if there have been test pits conducted for the stormwater basins? Uh, yes, I believe there were test pits conducted because there was a, a stormwater a complete stormwater report that was uh, completed and I believe also submitted. I have not seen that yet, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't submitted. Uh, and Dan Buttrick is the person on our commission who is most qualified to look at that, so we'll want to get his input. Um, but I wonder if you are able to share with us any information on the runoff numbers that you're seeing for pre and post. Uh, I don't have them off the top of my head right now. Uh, it may have been submitted for the special permit, but not for the Conservation I, Commission. Mm, I did receive them. Um, I okay, have them here. They're in the file folder. It's under Coleman Road Drainage Report, updated 2022, February 01, stamped. So we can share them now if, you, if you'd like, or um, whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, Cassie, why don't you pull that up? And just for clarification purposes, since Conservation Commission has um, authority over this, uh, we would also be the stormwater authority for the city on this project, right. correct? Okay. Okay. Yep, that's my understanding. Yeah, and I also received the signed stormwater permit application that's also in the, in the project folder. Let's see here. So we were looking for uh, proposed or? Calculate, try page four, calculations and design. Is that what this is? Oh, here we go. That's where it starts. Yes, that would be. Summary. So that's existing. Do we have a table anywhere that compares existing and proposed? These are all the standards. I don't know if this is going to be. No, this yeah. is going to be. It's going to get into the weeds. I, I, I. I don't, I'm sorry to say that I don't know if there is a, a table that's clearly comparing those two. Um, but we would certainly be happy to provide that. That would be helpful. Um, and typically, and this may be in the, the NOI documentation, but typically we also like to see um, specific responses to how the stormwater management standards are being addressed. Cassie, do you know if that was part of the report that was submitted to us? Do you mean the, um, I just saw it, all the standards, each one laid out, because this is standard one through 10. Oh, that um, might be it. Yeah, you went past mm -hmm. it too quickly. Yeah, uh, let's start at the top. And some of the test pit information is here. Installation of surface detention basins will result in the post-development peak discharge rates and runoff volume being less than pre-development peak discharge. See table one above. Does table one actually tell us that? Did this we miss is table it? One right here. That was table two in the other picture. Uh, I think yellow is existing and blue is proposed. Is that? stated so that, anywhere? That That's sense. just an yeah. assumption. Yeah, E1 and P1, those are existing and proposed. Okay. Okay, so again, we'll want to have um, Dan take a look at this with regards to the specifics of the 
stormwater bylaw. And do we have, um, Cassie, were the, the test pit information in here as well, or is that elsewhere? I didn't receive anything else that would have had that. So let me see back up here. Maybe it talks about it. Site train and soils, perhaps? Maybe Which Appendix B. Oh, Appendix B. Soils information? Possibly. One of Four the stormwater end. test pits were excavated by Berkshire Design Group. On is this what we're looking for here? Um, that's part of it. Yeah. Okay. So seasonal high groundwater depth of two feet and three of the pits and two and a half in the other. So how deep are the the pits proposed to be? Doug? Uh, they are uh, proposed to uh, be uh, well approximately uh, three feet deep, I believe. So then it seems like we're going to need some clarification as to how that's going to work if seasonal high groundwater was at two to two and a half feet, since that would be shallower than the basins are expected to be, and we don't want them to have standing water. I agree. Um, I would be happy to confirm that and report back on that. Excellent. Uh, let's see. I'm glad that you're thinking about snow storage. Um, one question I have is that based on the areas you were highlighting, it looks like the, the snow storage areas would potentially block runoff from making it to the basins. Is that something that's been considered? Uh, it has, uh, well, it's, yes, it's, it's been considered as much as, um, only to a limited degree, there's limited site availability for like space availability for where snow storage would go and putting it uh, inside the swale is kind of what currently makes the most sense. So when you say putting it inside the swale, you mean so the... That, yeah, that location, um, I'm moving my mouse around and I realize my screen is not being shared. So I'm gonna share again. Uh, this Thank location you. Here, if that's all right. Um, can you see this map mm -hmm. here on the screen now? So the location where I'm moving uh, my mouse here, this initial mm -hmm. swale um, is, uh, so the uh, location that uh, water is directed to is uh, to enter into this channel and then head through this initial four bay and then along through this uh, uh, swale and basically weave itself down to uh, this uh, location here, uh, down into this basin. So the location just right along the edge here is where snow storage would be inside the fence line. So it's it's uh, it's proposed to sort of zigzag. Did I follow that correctly? Uh, yes. The uh, site is the direction of this is both uh, headed through here and into this basin, and then also uh, headed the swale along this whole edge okay. uh, is directed along uh, this location. So there's kind of a high point along here. And I'm gonna back up again and start my mouse along the length of this swale, mm -hmm. headed to this initial sediment four bay. And then okay. uh, there's also an entrance uh, next to this building of where it would, is graded in although it's a little bit steeper through here, so that kind of the main area to catch the surface runoff across that parking area is this uh, swale that's graded at a, about 2% to get to this four bay. So that okay. this edge location is the main location for snow storage. Really, it's what's mainly what's available on site. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to back up a minute. Cassie, do you, so I'm, I have not dealt with a situation before, I don't know, maybe Jay has, where we have a parcel that uh, is split between two municipalities. I'm not entirely sure how we handle this from uh, a jurisdiction and, um, and stormwater 
calculations perspective. Does anybody have any insight on that? For a stormwater calculation perspective, I don't know, Jay, do you? Yeah, no, not, maybe not for stormwater. We've done projects where they went across boundaries, you know, into Southampton or, or somewhere else, but I don't remember stormwater having to be dealt with across those boundaries. So Jay, in those cases, um, as far as jurisdiction, I'm I'm wondering if if we speak at all to what's proposed on the Southampton side, do we pretend like that doesn't exist? What's your experience been? Um, I, I think we've talked about what happens on the other side, but you know, obviously we can't vote on it and, and make a decision. But if if we think something on the other side is affecting what's happening in East Hampton, we need to deal with that. Okay. I can. Uh, I can't I can't speak to what your town should do in terms of it being uh, split between two, but I'm happy to just basically give you a description of what's going on in the Southampton side to kind of compare systems. The site was um, the stormwater was designed uh, just looking at the, the parcel as a whole uh, mm -hmm. uh, and somewhat in terms of the um, site engineering for stormwater management. The town boundary was sort of ignored for that process. Um, the uh, on the south end, uh, stormwater is uh, directed down through this uh, swale across a series of weirs that are not clearly shown uh, uh, right in this graphic here. But uh, uh, by stormwater standards, you need to have a weir every so often. I don't know the exact distance um, uh, of uh, to just catch sediment through that through that uh, swale, but ultimately it is directed down into this basin and then there's mm -hmm. an emergency overflow down to a level spreader that then exits uh, into the wetlands um, down into the southeast. So one of the pieces that was driving this design was that Southampton had uh, put together, uh, updated a wetland bylaw and had a new uh, 35 foot no build uh, uh, area that we needed to work around. And so in order to do that, uh, a retaining wall is put on this Southeast corner of the site um, in order to be able to capture the grading necessary for these new facilities to be here. And so that's, that's currently the dark uh, line that is shown in this location that crosses between the two towns. So uh, this area was then pulled away from that site and then stormwater is directed uh, uh, kind of across to not flow over that wall, but directed down into this swale and into this basin to the south. Um, and then uh, above the wall, uh, this area, all of the upper area that is in East Hampton is directed to uh, be captured uh, to the east of the site. Um, can see uh, contours here so that it's to flow directly down, like directly mm -hmm. eastward. So that it's not, it's not headed south into the wetlands. It's headed to get uh, a pretreatment through the swale and through this four bay and then into right. the base. Right, uh, okay. I just wanna note, I, I've just received a note that the no build area in Southampton is a 25 foot. Oh, no build oh area. thank you for, for clarifying, I'm sorry. So one of the questions that I have that I think we'll need to get an answer to is whether we can accept the basin that is not in East Hampton as part of the stormwater handling for what is being built on East Hampton property because we won't have jurisdiction or authority to um, make sure that that basin in Southampton is properly maintained. And so I'm not sure if we can count that as part of the, the tally of whether you're meeting our stormwater requirements. I, I, I just, I simply don't have an answer to that. We'll have to look into that. That's a really good question. And hopefully, hopefully Dan will be able to shed light on that. Right. Um, also, I mean, just administratively for the two, I can speak towards, you know, should the commission do, decide that they do want to issue an order of conditions for this project, it will be only for the East Hampton side and the applicant will need to seek a separate order of conditions for the South Hampton side. Um, all the work associated mm -hmm. in the two different ones. And uh, those, my recommendation that those two order of conditions should be, you know, uh, I don't know what level of collaboration is allowed, but I would hope 
the maximum would be best for us to pursue just so that there's not anything contradicting between the two and management is easiest for um, the applicant in the future. I don't know how that comes to, into play, but I it, does that make sense though? I think so, yeah. And I, I suspect, Cassie, that the, the simplest thing may be for you to coordinate uh, with Southampton to compare notes on um, the conditions that we're proposing and, and see if they're in alignment. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, what I what I don't know and what I was, I guess, hoping was that as we, you know, the commission will often issue the order and then I will craft the order of conditions and then, you know, what the vote will have happened before I make that final product just because we do have our boilerplate. But potentially for this project, would it make sense to, when the commission gets to a place where they're ready to issue, to hold and make, let me collaborate with Southampton, make sure that what I'm presenting, these two things mesh, mesh well together and then come to another meeting. I mean, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here, but that's kind of what I was thinking, just a potential difference in our order of operations or divergence mm -hmm. from what we normally do. Yeah, I think, um, Cass, I mean, obviously we're gonna need some more information on this project regardless. So um, maybe in the meantime, while we're waiting on that, you could go ahead and reach out and see if Southampton also has a boilerplate that they use and we could compare those and kind of get the process started and then just see where we're at. Yeah, yeah, I've been in communication with Southampton and um, one of their commissioners is, is actually here tonight. She's watching, so um, we, I think that sounds like a good idea. Okay. Excellent. Um, let's see. Those are my questions for the moment. Do other commissioners have uh, questions or comments? Um, if, do we want to do a site visit on this location? We did do a site visit. Um, for, it was a bit back. Um, we can certainly ask for another one, do another one. This is on February 9th. We did the site visit. Okay. But I think I was the only one in attendance. All right. I, did, I didn't see that. And I can share the pictures now if you guys want or whatever you prefer. Yeah, Cassie, why don't you go ahead and pull them up? Okay. I'll stop sharing. My computer struggling. <laughs> I'm getting the not responding. Whew. Okay, it came. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes it, it doesn't work and then it all crashes, but we're, we should be good. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So, um, in this image, this is Coleman Road here extending. This is the undeveloped part. This is all, I believe, South, I don't know where the line is exactly in this image, but Southampton is, you know, back here. Um, and I guess it's like a triangular part. So it might be this whole thing. Um, another look at it again, there's Coleman Road to the right. So I just shifted to the left a little here in perspective, shifting over to the left to the existing structures that are there even more so, more of the existing. This is that um, kind of easement that they have that is access to the current facility. So Cassie, just to pause you for a second, yes. if you could go back a picture. So in this image, the, the new buildings would be both at the foreground and then sort of off to the far right. Is that correct, Doug? That's correct. Okay, thank you. So this is looking along where you kind of was talking about where the mowing stops and you can kind of see it does start to the topography starts to go down. Um, again, that's Coleman Road in the background and just kind of showing the current mode area versus the unmowed area. Again, wetlands over here. A view at the wetlands, Coleman Road would be the right. And then this is the opposite direction. So Coleman Road is directly behind me in this image. There's some of the existing uh, storage facility structures, and then it seems like kind of like in this area potentially would be one of the basins. That's correct. This is looking back, so the wetlands are directly behind me now, and this sort of extends that's that easement. That's the entrance, current entrance to the move facility. And then more of that area, so the wetlands are the left, Coleman Road, easement to the right. Something shifted. Okay, wetlands again. Um, the bike path is down here. I think I had climbed down, try to get where potentially the edge of the wetlands may have been, but this is before that letter notes that um, Wendell Wetland Services had gone out and reflagged. So there probably are better flags out there now. Mm -hmm. 
closer to where the basin, the new basin is gonna be on the East Hampton side. Big snow pile. The buildings, that, the existing buildings are kind of to the left and behind me here. Yeah, and to the right is where the existing buildings are, just kind of looking up from the kind of more wetland area. Within the wetland area, looking up. Same situation, it kind of, it does extend back pretty far, so I kind of went far back in there. Mm -hmm. Looking back at Coleman Road and the rest of the wetlands extending towards the Southampton side. More of the same. Kind of rotating around here. The basin probably would be somewhere in that area. Maybe closer this way. It's hard to tell where I am in this picture. There's the bike path here, it's the edge of the property on the other side. So the buildings getting as, as far as we can from the existing buildings. Doug, what is the distance from um the bike path to where the nearest building or nearest nearest construction activity would be? Uh, it's a good question. I could not tell you off the top of my head. I'm wondering, because I know there are some streams on the opposite side of the bike path. I want to confirm that we're outside of all riverfront area. Uh, yeah, I will confirm that. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm just making a note real quick as well. I'm not sure where where those streams are in proximity to the site. They may not be close at all, but just would like to confirm. Okay. All right, carrying on then. So now this is more towards the Southampton side of things. There's the bike path again. So it's kind of walking near the, you know, the rear of the property, I guess you say. I don't know what cardinal direction I'm facing here, but the bike path is carrying on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is some kind of like depression here. Yeah, there might be a stream channel there actually. Mm, maybe not, it's hard to say. It, it, it might be on the other side, like you said, it might be on the yeah. other side of the bike path there. I think it is. Bike path continuing on here just kind of getting into the wetlands back there. So now I think I'm right on the tree line here and looking back up at where the existing structures are. Looking back at the tree line, that's that red barn Coleman roads running around here. I was saying, now we're back at the structures. So uh, this is looking up, there's the easement there, Coleman road would be to the left and these are the existing buildings. And yeah, just kind of overview again of the whole area. Mm -hmm. Some kind of in like, like a catch basin. Right. Is there an existing stormwater system on site, Doug? There's an existing series of catch basins um, that um, we are not wanting to change um, the location or, or kind of change the drainage of the existing system, just uh, the main. Um, change of those basins, uh, we are shifting the location uh, for the new uh, buildings of this exact one that's in the photograph here uh, in order to basically move it. Uh, I believe we're moving that um, up just a little bit to be out of the way of the existing buildings, but we're not trying to change really any of the plumbing that exists and what they're trying to capture. Um, really, the, the new stormwater is really uh, designed to handle the uh, kind of the new runoff from the um, additional uh, paved areas and building facilities. Okay. This is an example of these uh, folding gates in the photograph here. These kind of farm gates that are used to close the area. The site's not fenced other than having these kinds of gates at the uh, entrance. This is to the south end of the existing facilities. 
and there's gates like this also off to the east end. And essentially, my understanding is the folks that do the plowing uh, that are contracted for the plowing basically just push them aside and then just dump the snow through the gates. And so we're trying to not have the fencing be sort of just pushed aside like this kind of blatantly uh, for the future. So the site is going to have a permanent fence around it. And then that fence is meant to be uh, far enough south and out of the way of plowing to leave space for this so that this kind of thing would happen still within the fencing. Okay. That's my last picture, so. All right, are there other uh, questions from commission members? So uh, where they wanna put the basin, you had pictures of trees. There's, is there gonna be any tree removal? I think there's gonna be some tree removal, but it's uh, minimized uh, to the extent that this was put essentially inside um, the, I'm gonna share my screen again here. So this is looking at the East Hampton side, the east end of the proposed site. These are the four new uh, proposed buildings on this Eastern end. Uh, and so this area that I'm circling around with my uh, mouse is the area that is directed to this new uh, basin. And this line, kind of the northern edge, is where those trees are located. And then they exist along the southern end, kind of wrap around if you're able to follow uh, my mouse on the screen. Essentially, we're trying to build this and propose this inside the existing tree line to the greatest extent possible. Do you know how many trees? you would be removing? Uh, I, I, I don't have a handle on it, but I, I, don't, I don't know if we're actually removing any trees to be able to make this basin. There were trees uh, down in this location here, and it's possible that Cassie was standing down on the Southampton side of the site, uh, down on this edge of trees, and we're not planning on removing those. Right, I wasn't sure with the picture, the way it was facing near the newest units proposed to the right where the basin is, if there was a line of trees there, and if you were gonna move any of the trees within that area where you wanna put in the basin. I don't believe we are uh, removing any trees in this area, but I will certainly confirm that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Were there also invasive species in this area? Uh, that's a good question. I am not entirely sure. Okay. But I'll find out. Thank you. Doug, what is the proposed planting plan for the basins? Uh, we're proposing to use a, um, a seed mix that's from uh, New England uh, Wetland Nursery. So it's their wet mix that's proposed. So it's a series of native uh, perennial grasses and her herbaceous perennial plants that are kind of your rain garden type plants that'll take to, take to drought and also take to the saturation that would exist. Um, in the basin and then uh, at the bottom of the basin and as, as well the uh, banks of the basement. And that what makes you anticipate will, will work for all of those different locations? Yep. Yeah, we've had good experience with this. This is the, I'll zoom in on that section of it. Here's the 
uh, list of species that exist in that um, that wetland mix, series of um, rushes and sedges, uh, grasses, and a series of perennials. And where then is like. the, uh, sorry, go ahead. Go on. Sorry, go ahead. Where's the lawn seed mix proposed? Uh, just in areas of disturbance outside of the wetland buffer in that okay. area, like where they're putting in fencing um, and around this parking area that they're, uh, these four parking spaces that they're putting in. So any of those areas uh, for that would be disturbed from that construction or the construction of the fence around the, that area. So there'd be lawn in this location here, for okay. example. But all of this area around this basin uh, and all along the eastern side would all be using this wet mix. And what's the proposed uh, long-term O&M for those basins? Uh, so that would typically be an annual mowing. Usually it's pretty minimal, but it's uh, mowed on an annual basis just to keep out um, larger woody you know, trees from migrating in or larger invasive shrubs uh, from migrating in. And will there be um, access, will there be a gate or something through the fence to get to that from mowing? How will they actually reach that to implement the o &M? That's a great question. Um, there, uh, I, I will get back to you on that. I don't know. Okay. We want to make sure that they're not going to be going through the edge of the wetland to get there, obviously. Yeah, that makes sense. Any other questions? I think I'm good. Any questions or comments from the public? All right, hearing none, um, we have requested some additional information. So uh, do we have a motion to continue this until our next meeting? I'll make a motion to continue to uh, April 11th at 6 p.m. A second. second. Thank you. I'll Roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Ryan? Aye. Commissioner August? Aye. Commissioner Whittemore? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. This will be continued until, uh, I've already forgotten, April 11th April at 6 p.m. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Appreciate this. All right. Good night. Good night. Um, I have a request to take another item out of order, or the next item out of order, uh, mm -hmm. item eight. Oh, Lord, what is it? I think it's eight. Eight B. Seven B? Eight B? Eight B. Yeah, General okay. Business, One Industrial Parkway. Chair of View. Um, hi, Nan. Nan Childs is here. Um, she's with. Do we uh, um, just a yeah. moment, Cassie? Can we have oh, a motion? Go ahead. <laughs> I'll make I'll make the motion to take eight B out of order. Second. Roll call vote. Ryan. Aye. August. Aye. Whittemore. Aye. Motion carries. All right. So general business eight B one industrial parkway trail review. Take it away, Cassie. Okay, yeah. So um, Nan reached out to me about they they have an existing trail that goes through um, a wetland area in the rear of the, it's a school. And so um, she reached out because they wanted to do some vegetation management, particularly for invasive species, Phragmites are the big one there. And then um, they also wanted to make some improvements to the trail, placing boards or like a stepping stepping stone type structures out of uh, stumps or something, uh, or something like that. Um, I reviewed past permitting for this property and there's a number of RDAs that were done in the past for different things like a play structure and vegetation management. Um, and there were future plans kind of noted in that process for the trail, but the trail turns out actually wasn't permitted. And I can show a plan kind of showing you what we're working with here. Um, and so let me share actually that now. But there, there is a trail there because I've seen little trails and seating areas and things. Yeah, and maybe the best thing to show you would be the aerial imager of it. Um, so the existing trail, it's about 400 feet long. 
um, and it's only as wide as like a person. And then there is one small crossing as well. That's a kind of a, maybe one to two feet wide, at most five feet long uh, over the stream. But let me pull up the aerial view from Mass Mapper here. I think that will be the most helpful. So the question it is, how do does the commission, you know, want to deal with this? Essentially, you know, is isn't because is this something that there could be after the fact permian done for, through an RDA in which, you know, kind of the work that they wanted to do anyways of the invasive species management and planting of some native species could also function as kind of remediation for the work, the trail that's already there, um, or. I'm just pulling it up now, sorry. Oh, okay. Let me share my screen real quick. Because I did some research too, you know, speaking to the um, the chair kind of offline about it. And she said to look at precedent for um, other projects that the commission has uh, done permitting for similar kind of trail type structures or things like this. And there's a number with PCT that we had done in the past um, where we had permitted it through an RDA. Um, some of them also including crossings, but so you can kind of see I think the trail entrance is here. There's the crossing and then they have some boards down, comes around, exits here. And where are the, do we know where the wetlands are? The resource yeah, areas. So are. actually, let me turn that layer on. I there's old delineations from the original RDAs. Those are from mm -hmm. 2014. Um, that could be more or less comprehensive than what the layers that come up here are. But I think just for our purposes right now, it's helpful enough. The ones that. Oh my gosh, I can't remember what thing. It's I think under. you want hydrography. Yes. There we go. There we go. Native wetlands. I mean, it's, it's pretty wet in there. That's what the, the boards are for because it's, oh, it's pretty oh. wet. Oh, there's one way to go to the base map. Hmm. I don't know why it's not coming up. You're right, Jay. It is. It definitely is like there's, let me see. I'll pull up the, the one from the original RDA then. You need to drag drag it on top to so it's the top layer or something? Uh, there shouldn't be any other layers above okay. it. You know, okay. So. okay, hold on just a second. Here we go. It's here, just need to rotate. Okay, so keeping in mind this is from 2014 and this is kind of the extent of the wetlands the wetlands currently being mowed. That was part of, I think they let this grow in. And this is, so it's pretty much almost all wetlands and there's kind of this drainage stream that gets directed and then it actually goes under the building. It gets channelized under the building. And where is the, the trail? Is it all within that shaded area? Yeah, I believe so. Is that does that match up with your understanding, Nan? I think it starts somewhere back here behind the building and then kind of just loops around. Yeah, you're you're right. It's but it's in the in the white area, not the green area, I think. Because it goes, it crosses over where the the, the drainage is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it comes out, it kind of loops up, there's a big loop around and comes out. Maybe yeah. I can compare. Yeah, yep, it's pretty much all in the white area. I'm just looking at simultaneously the uh, mass mapper image. 
So it kind of starts here, loops around. But the delineated wetland is extends from up where your cursor just was down to into the green. Is that it's yeah. hard to tell what the markings are. So this it's kind of like a little finger that comes down. That's all wetlands. And then it kind of looks like to me loops around and zigzags down to the channel. I, it, it's hard to say the extent of it truly, but it, I would think that it would be safe to say the majority of the white area is probably wetlands. Okay, so the path is in the wetlands. That was what I was trying to, to determine. Um, and Cassie, do you, I don't have the regs in front of me. I know that there's an exemption for narrow footpaths, but I believe it's only in buffer and riverfront area. Can you confirm that? Yeah, that's something that I, when I did the site visit, I was thinking like, oh, isn't this potentially exempt? But I think that that's correct. That is for the, um, only for in the buffer zone. I'll double check that now, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's correct. So yeah, all the minor activities um, only occur and buffer, yeah. Which are part of the buffer zone. Okay. What are others' thoughts on how to approach this? Or Nan, did you want to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, I guess, I, I don't know for sure, but I guess maybe the whole trail is in the wetlands, but but the where the trail, there's just one section of the trail that is really wet. The Most of the trail is in sort of a wooded area um, that has like oaks and um, it does, the area that, that we wanted to put more steps down is an area where it's, it's alder and Phragmites is coming in really thick. And it's, when we, when we first put in the trail years ago, like when the school was bought, the previous owner clear cut that area and the trail was sort of put along a, a path that was pre-existing and it, it was drier then. And, and I think the, 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 it's, gotten wetter over the years there's been more development uphill and there's um so so that's kind of the reason why we want to we want to protect it more we want to put in like we were thinking um stumps with planks on top so we wouldn't be disturbing the soil we would just be getting kids off the ground and um give them the abil ability to go back there and what but is it, the surface now it's just soil it, uh, well, it's, um, no, it's grass. It's grass. And except there, uh, maybe four years ago or so, uh, uh, one of the, uh, they put some planks down. So the planks, the plank, and the planks are set on wood, wood um, four by fours. Mm -hmm. So it's very, it's only two, like, two very narrow planks and that was put down um, and that really the kids walk on that. They don't walk on the ground. So there's no, there's no mulch or gravel or any kind of other surface currently or proposed? Not for the trail, no, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's the, yeah. So I'm, I'm contemplating whether this would even uh, constitute an alteration. I'm not sure if it would. Okay, yeah, because there's no material has been added beyond the planks. Right. And you're not disturbing the ground surface. Um, I mean, you, it sounds like you're essentially walking through the woods, <laughs> which yes. is not a permittable offense. <laughs> <laughs> well, the main goal for the nature trail, of course, was is to have an outdoor classroom and right. get the kids out there. And right. Um, yeah, I don't, what are what are other thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's not, not altering the resource, so I don't know if it is permittable. With the addition of, of new planks or kind of these stumps for the planks to be on, any of these additional things be an issue or? It's not in a 100-year floodplain or anything like that, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. If it's not going to change flood storage, um, it's not going to change water flow. It certainly is not going to impact habitat. We're not disturbing the surface. We're not creating erosion. I'm not sure that there's really anything that would constitute an alteration that would be in need of a permit. Right. We do want to, to um, not, not dig out, but cut back in invasives. There's like every invasive imaginable back there. Mm -hmm. And, and we have been doing some of that already, but we would like to continue. And my thought, and you, you may know better than me, is to um, just let that, the shrubs, there's native, like there's uh, red maple and um, let, let the trees grow up and hope that that might shade out some of the Phragmites that's coming in. I don't, mm -hmm. that's a really tough one to control. And I, so I don't know, you might have some suggestions on what we do with that because it is it's gotten worse the phragmites has gotten worse mm -hmm. yeah phragmites is one that i don't have a lot of personal experience with i'm not sure what the best approaches tend to be there um for the invasives management i think probably an rda would be a good choice um and so i suppose if we're going to go that route anyways we could just incorporate the trail and and roll everything into that um and then we'd certainly be covered, but I think right, that would that be my sense. inclination. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that would be easy enough to do. And um, Nan, I know you're already working on potentially an RDA. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think I can just go ahead and finish it. Okay. That sounds awesome. good. Yeah, I don't know if anyone is going to I appreciate it because I just wasn't sure. I needed some, it was me who really needed the clarity on what was the mm -hmm. best advice for her to go forward. So, um, sounds good. Well, if we were, do we, we need the um, RDA for the invasive work? I, yes, I believe so. Invasive management would be, I believe one of the minor exempt activities that's listed for buffer and river front. But if you're in a resource area, um, you should have the RDA to be, because removal of vegetation certainly constitutes a, an alteration, even though we, we can all agree that removal of invasives is a positive, it still is, is considered an alteration. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like, um, I'll work with, um, Cassie to, to get that and maybe try to meet as soon as we can. Uh, yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll send you an email tomorrow um, and then we can kind of, we can go from there, but. Great, Th thank you everyone. Thanks, I appreciate all the work you do. All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks for your time. All right, returning to regular order. I believe we are on um, request for certificate of compliance, which we have none. Enforcement actions, Cassie, do we have any updates? Yeah. Um, no, let me just double check. Sorry, I have my document here. Yeah, no updates this time. Like I said um, at the last meeting, the only one that I'm anticipating something relatively soon is for 18 Pine Street. Mm -hmm. We set the revisit date as April 25th. Great. Um, so it's still, still early yet, but we're getting there. Thank you. Uh, open space updates. Any updates on Echo Dale West? Excuse me. Yeah, um, my main update, you know, I haven't completed reaching out to the Ag, Com Ag Committee or um, figuring out the situation with the Garden Committee. Um, but I did look into more details about how the, the solo ordinance working group kind of was formed. And because um, we were talking about having that be like kind of a possible model for going forward, because mm -hmm. that group was pretty successful. So that group, it had a total of nine members. There were no more than two people in total from any of the other relevant boards. So there's like two people from Energy Advisory Committee, two people from here, you know, so on and so forth. Um, they met only once a month. Uh, and I also spoke with City Engineering and they said they're familiar with, there was also questions about ADA compliance and like, what could we do in-house for if there were to be some kind of like ADA compliant trail, put it in there. And they're familiar with ADA, of course. And, you know, 
what is required there, but they probably wouldn't be in the position to be creating drawn plans mm -hmm. for that because um, there's a lot of nuances to it. And so, you know, we don't want to get that wrong. So not that they wouldn't be able to do it, but it make, might make more sense to get like a third party or hire a consultant feasibility study, something done for that. And that just kind of gives an idea of what resources we have available. Um, so that's Great. where I'm at now, but still, yeah, the, my next plan is to kind of more formally reach out to the agricultural commission and still sort out what the story is with the garden committee. So, okay. okay. Jay, the, um, if we wanted to look at a consultant to do that design, that's something we could apply to CPA for, isn't it? Uh, because it's open space, I would say yes. Okay. All right. Great. So we'll we'll keep going with our current plan, which is to try and get a um, informal committee together, and then we can explore this further once we've started to make some headway. And, it, and it's city property, so the city would make the request to the CPA. So right, our city, our city planner would would fill out the form. Okay. Um, any updates from Lathrop community? No updates. All right. And then moving on to compliance updates. Cassie, which ones do you have updates for? Okay. I have updates for <clears throat> 6973 Loudville. They did fulfill all of their pre-construction requirements, including the documents that the commission made requests for changes to. Those changes were made um, and they submitted the bond for the stormwater permit and met all those stormwater permit requirements. Um, so work is likely to begin soon. They may have other requirements they need to fill for their special permit. Um, so they have not started work yet, uh, but they may have started like site work. But um, yeah, that's gonna be getting started too. What, what I did and what I would like to do going forward, just kind of informationally for you guys is I sent a transmittal to all the other um, departments in the city, just saying like, hey, they finished everything for the Conservation Commission you should check in to see if there's anything else that you that you need for your department for them and just putting it on everyone's radar. So um, I sent that out for this project. Okay. And the next project that I have updates for, this is for the DPW um, bundled order of conditions for routine maintenance activities. They are, they reached out to me about three bridge repairs projects that they want to work on soon. They sh shouldn't require any, you know, the, we did the one on Glendale Street that it had they were a requirement for scaffolding to be able to reach. So they were going to have the scaffolding in the water below. That should not be necessary for any of these projects. So I think that they're pretty much exempt and don't need to come under the bundled order. But I wanted to double check and make sure with you guys that was the case. What they're doing are patching holes in the deck material on the surface. So they will have to extend something underneath the bridge to catch material. So there will be structures, but it's not going to be anything that's supported by the ground or shouldn't impact the ground underneath at all. Or, you know, and the no, no dewatering necessary and no impacts to flows under the bridges. That shouldn't, that should not be part of it because they're and just I, doing it for the surface. I think then, um, I don't have the categories memorized, but I think without uh, a need for dewatering that it would fall into the, the category above that, which I believe is just the notification. Right. Okay, cool. I might get it a more formal notification um, from them. They already were able to send me, like they have to send it out um, potentially I think to bid or something, but they're making like a guidance document and it has wording in there that says, you know, no work in the stream can't, you have to be able to do everything from above. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll see if maybe I'll get something a little more formal and then I can just have it on the record. Okay. Okay. Jay, were you gonna add something? No, no, um, that sounds good to me. Okay. I was like, protecting you know, material from falling into the water. That's great. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> And the last update was for One Ferry Street. So on here, the note is that, so yeah, they've met all the requirements. They also resubmitted their documents they needed to submit and it included those changes that the commission had requested. But I still need to do one final site visit to make sure that the erosion controls are in place because that configuration has changed since I last did it. So I gotta, I'm still waiting to get that set up. And once that's set up though, they're gonna be good to go. Um, so just kind of giving you that all, putting it on your radar, but I'll probably do a similar email to all departments. And I'm probably going to do that. I'd like to do it for all, at least order of conditions projects going forward, um, just so everybody else knows what's going on potentially. Great. And that was it for me for ongoing project updates. If anyone has any questions about any other projects. Okay. Any questions? 
All right, moving on, general business uh, meeting minutes from March 14th, 2022. Yeah, I, okay, so those are ready for you guys to vote on, but I also got information about, and remember Dan, Dan Buttrick was asking last meeting about, you know, what are the requirements for people who have been in attendance or haven't been, and I was actually able to ask this um, at the open meeting law training that I went to, which I might not have had to go to, which is crazy, but it was still helpful that I got to ask this question. Um, but uh, so what I asked was whether a commissioner must have attended a meeting to vote on the approval of that meeting's minutes. And they explicitly said that uh, a commissioner who had been absent can vote to approve those minutes. The open meeting law does not specify how minutes must be approved. So it's up to the commissioner to determine what policy for approval they wanna use. But basically, I know it, some people might sound a little counterintuitive, but you can vote on minutes for, for a meeting that you did not go to. Right. Just can. I was probably at that meeting with you. I was too. I heard was, the same thing. That was thing. one of the questions that came up. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. You guys are there. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was me asking that. Um, so uh, they also said there was <clears> another <throat> interesting point about it was that um, commissions can have it so that just the chair approves them. It doesn't even need to be everybody approving okay. them. I, I like what we do. I think that's mm -hmm. nice that and I would recommend that if you're going to vote on the minutes that you, I don't know, watch the recording or at least read them and asking questions, but we can do, or you guys can do whatever you want, essentially, as long as it should happen at the meeting and it should be clear whether or not they're getting approved. Uh, motion to approve the minutes from March 14th. Second. Roll call vote. Uh, Ryan? Aye. Whittemore? Aye. August? We did not hear you, Deborah. Hi. Thank you. Uh, motion carries. All right. Uh, we've already covered general business item B, so skipping to C, 476 East Street, possible violation. Yeah, so I updated the letter that I was going to send them to include information or request for information about the vegetation removal that happened there. Kelsey, can you remind us what, what this oh. is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is a property on 476 East Street where I had received a complaint about a concern that potentially the swales, there's a property that's mm. up higher on the hill and then there's there's properties below. And there is a certificate of compliance that requires them to maintain it over time in perpetuity. And this came up in 2013, the commission checked and it was all in order. Um, there is a concern that that maintenance has not been continuing. It could be impacting the properties below. When I did a site visit from the public right of way, it, I also noticed that there was a lot of vegetation clearing Mm -hmm. along the drainage slash stream that exists um, on this kind of like little dog leg that the property has. And so yes, yes. I sent a letter that included a request about information about that clearing, but also about the, the maintenance of those drainage structures. So um, I haven't received a response yet. It hasn't been a huge amount of time since then. So um, still, still reasonable, I, I would say that we have not yet received a response. Okay. Was that sent uh, certified mail or just regular? It was sent certified return receipt. So I haven't received, we... received the return receipt. Yet. Okay. You have not, you said? Have not. Okay. All right. Great. Um, next item, uh, possible violation at three button road. Yeah. So this is a different notification that I got um, about a property that this person said they were just driving by and noticed that there was a lot of uh, cut material and in the rear of this property, there is wetlands and actually have like a screenshot of the mass mapper. Is this adjacent, Cassie, to, this is not the same violation that we talked about a year or so ago, is it? No, it, it was like close. the next property over, yeah. yeah. Okay. That was 11, I think, or 10. I think it was even a little farther down. Okay. Yeah. On that one. But so this, let me share my screen because it's really just this one little, that was like, in front of a stream. This is more, at least based off of the mass map, or showing more of a, of a wetland. This is 100 feet out. So almost the whole property is within mm -hmm. um, the, buffer. the buffer zone. The vegetation clearing, when I drove by, looked like it could have occurred here. And I saw some stockpiling of cut material here, which I did not get a picture of. But I did get a picture of this area. It's not immediately apparent, you know, the extent of the clearing. Um, and I wasn't really sure how we wanted to proceed. I can send him a letter and just say, hey, what's going on here? This area, I think, is where it's gone down. Let's see. Some of the properties on Button Road had monuments behind mm -hmm. them where you were not supposed to, you know, 
mow past, but I can't, most of them are on the other side of the road. I, I don't know about this side. I don't know if that's one of them right here. I yeah, don't know. No. So is this the south side of the road? Can you zoom out, Cassie? Yeah. yeah. This is... Uh, it's on the I'm south gonna, side. Yeah, this is from the roadway. It's the south side. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think um, Jay's right that a, a number of properties in this neighborhood had monumentation or otherwise um, demarcated um, limits of mowing and limits of clearing. So I think the first thing to do would be to check to see if we can find the plans, which I'm fairly certain we have for this neighborhood, um, to see if there are any notations and um, maybe then go from there. It, it sounds like what you're describing may be in the buffer zone as opposed to in the wetland, but it's hard to know that just from the aerial and a drive-by. So um, I think if we can find out first whether this is supposed to be a, a no disturb area, um, that may give us a better sense of, of where to look next. Okay, all right, cool. And then, yeah, I, I'm my thinking, and again, it might be getting ahead of myself, but if we, um, uh, if, if I do find the plans and it's like, yeah, that shouldn't happen, um, or even just if it's clearing within the buffer zone, my, my step would be to send them a letter. She's like, hey, are you, are you doing this? Can I come stop by and see, so. Do you um, still have the pictures you can bring up? Does it look like there was a monument? Oh, I just realized I didn't, I, I thought I was sharing them and I wasn't. So yes, mm -hmm. I do have them, hold on. Uh, here we go. Okay, did you see these pictures? This is from farther away. No. This is closer. So I don't know if that- Right, right where right your there. arrow is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It certainly does look like a monument. Yep. So yeah, I would say they're not supposed to be clearing beyond there. Um, can we see evidence of any others along there? Other there, um, other monuments? Can you see where the I, line was? I assume the line was at the at the mowing, most likely. This image. What about off to the right? Can I see anything? That's as far as I can go to the right, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to say and otherwise. Um, yeah. And I don't well, know. That, go on. I was gonna, I mean, that that looks pretty clearly to be a monument. Um, so again, I would check for the plans, see if it was shown that there's supposed to be a, and, and the order to see if there is a um, documentation of a no clear zone. But I think um, given that we can see that in the photo, I would go ahead and put a letter together um, and alert them to the fact that they are uh, appearing to be clearing in an area that was designated as um, no disturb. Cool. And ask them to please cease and desist. I can do that. Okay, awesome. And I don't know if the, you know, extends anywhere back here or not, but there, I don't have a picture of it, but on the other side of the house, right. there might've been a stockpile of material. Yep. So um, I hope I'll try to get, when I do, if they call me or whatever, I'll try to get a site visit going, so. Great, that sounds good. All right, um, next order of business, future hybrid meetings. Yeah, so, okay. Sounds exciting. So, <laughs> very <laughs> exciting. So you may have seen the press release that came from the mayor's office um, about this. So. All the meetings are going to in person starting April 1st, but some particular meetings were chosen to start being hybrid as well, just because, you know, they do allow for more public access and our board is one of uh, our commission is one of those that often has a lot more public involvement. Um, so in theory, this shouldn't impact you at all. Other than that, now you'll just have to show up in person at the city hall for the meetings. And I will, which obviously is not that's quite an impact. I know. Yeah, it is not, what do you mean to no impact? <laughs> that's something we need to know. <laughs> well, it is something you need to know. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> so it's, it, I'm glad that we were all told. But um, in theory, when it's running, I will be running the hybrid element of it. So it won't okay. be anything like new duties that you guys need to add on or someone needs to be concerning themselves with. Um, and we're working to kind of figure out like a, I don't know, like a guidance document and so that there's continuity between the boards and committees and things like that. It's not completed yet. Um, and I'm hoping to get training soon from the IT department of how 
that's going to go down. I think, though, that we will be back in the original room that we were in before, which is in the basement of the municipal offices. Um, because, and I think there, there's a big TV in there. There's a and, giant TV in there. Yep, there's a giant TV in there. Oh, yeah, you must have seen it. So um, seen it. I think that'll be the main addition. And, and the goal is to be that um, people who are, you guys will be able to see everything that's happening on the computer screen. And that's the same thing that everyone else is seeing who's who's attending um, virtually. And then people in public will be able to like, you guys will be speaking to microphones and they will too. So anyone who's attending virtually will be able to hear, at least hear everything that's going on. The video feed will be of the whole group like it was before, that's mm -hmm. my assumption. Um, and then I will be sharing the plans or the applicant will be sharing the plans on the computer screen as well. So. Um, at least maybe no more falling over easels or anything like that. We'll see. But uh, does anyone have any questions about that? I know it's still kind of like a weird stage right now, but. So first point of clarification, our next meeting, we are required to show up at City Hall in the basement conference room B, is that correct? Yep, April 11th. Okay. In a quorum of, of in-person commissioners to hold the meeting. So um, we went through this training this week, but they didn't tell us anything about interpersonal skills that we need to have again. I, I know. How are we going to know what to do? <laughs> right. To stare at each do other. We, do we shake hands? Do we <laughs> smile? What do we do here? It's very strange. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fun. But uh, basically, yeah, that was another big thing. I think we, we kind of cleared this up before from you know, way long ago, and we were like, oh, it's coming really soon, and it, it didn't come, but um, definitely, we need to at least have a quorum of people in person, but ideally, I mean, we would save people attending virtually to if you, like, really need it, because it's it'll be hard to, for me, at least, to coordinate making sure we have quorum of people if everyone's always vying for, like, the, the virtual attendance option, so, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, hopefully that still makes sense to everyone, just because... It'd be hard <laughs> for me to coordinate. Yeah, my preference certainly would be to assume that we're going to show up in person unless yes. you have a, a real urgent reason not to. Right. Will you okay. still be sending us everything as we've been getting it so we can still view beforehand? Before I'd like to do that. Come in? Okay. Yeah, I'd like to keep doing that. And then also in person, I will bring a physical copy of everything as well. So that was going to be another question I had, Cassie. So everything's going to be displayed digitally so that everyone remote can see it. But we will also have potentially plans at the table that we can look at as we used to. I, I would think yes, but it may be, you know, for plans, because right now you guys can review the plans yourself on your computers. You know, right. I can't right. see everything that y'all are looking at. I don't think we need to, but I think we just need to be mindful you know, and that was kind of a, a that we're pointing to the screen. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. that I know I can probably keep keep mm -hmm. along pretty well and be gesturing myself as well on the screen so that it all matches up. Um, and you know, before we even before COVID and everything, if people were watching the video, they wouldn't be able to see what you're looking at. Correct. Right. Right. But it would be great to be able to provide that service for people. And yeah. I think we can do it. I it'd think be, I should be nice be to, to it'd be nice to work with full size plans again. Yeah. yeah. Yep, Although I will, I mean, that, that TV has got to be at least 60 inches. It's gigantic. Okay. It's, it's huge. I think it'll be easy to see. Yeah. I don't know how it's going to be set up in the room, but I think it'll be easy to see. Yeah. It's Thanks. giant. So. Okay. <laughs> um, All right. Uh, any other questions? What is the current, Cassie, I think the, the mask mandate is not mandated anymore in city hall is that correct is it still yeah. encouraged what's the current status um there's current status is you don't have to wear a mask when you're in city hall some people okay. from the public do but most employees do not um some employees do so some people it's really your choice now if you want to or not where you feel comfortable with um and uh i think still i don't know about social distancing um i don't know i think that there is an air filter in that room though there's mm -hmm. that big, yeah. So there's an air filter in there. Um, and I guess just being mindful of what makes other people comfortable, I guess, if some people want more space, try to give them the space. Um, but I don't think that there's necessarily rules on it at this stage. Okay. So right. what is the rule? What's the rule on Michael bringing candy? <laughs> there's a precedent. There's a precedent. You got to bring candy. Okay. <laughs> um, I had one other question. Oh, and what are 
will um, presenters are allowed to to choose to either be hybrid or to either be remote or present? Is that how this is going to work? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question, and that hasn't—I haven't gotten clarity on that yet. Are they going to be required to be in person, or will they still be able to, you know, attend virtually? My hope is that they can still attend virtually, um, just because it seems like a, a more accessibility for people. But I—I I genuinely don't know. There might be some reason to say, like, no, the applicant needs to be there in person as well. That I'm, you know, not thinking of right now. But that—that's something needs to be worked out. Okay. Yeah, and that's something that. Um, we should try to get an answer to this week if possible so that we can let anybody know for the next meeting because I, I think um, this will certainly be a change and people may not be anticipating or planning ahead for travel. Yeah, yep, I agree. Okay. Uh, next order of business, the annual conflict of interest and open meeting law training. Anything we need to add there, Cassie? I don't think so. I think the only people who haven't finished the conflict of interest training are Dan and Melissa, who aren't here. And I didn't, I was supposed to resend it to them, and I'm realizing right now that I did not do that. So that's kind of on me. And then I think you guys, sounds like you cleared away your open meeting law attendance. And so if you got that email, mm -hmm. so you should just send that to Lindsay. And I saw Jay, you, you sent I copied it. you. I sent to yeah. Lindsay and copied you. So, yep. So as long as it is something, in some form goes directly to her, then it should be good to go. Um, yeah, I think that's hopefully next agenda I can take it off, but. Great. All right. Um, and do we, do we have a new member in the queue? So I have two people he, who are here who are interested in joining the commission, Sarah Carr and Hal Weeks. And I don't know where you guys are at with submitting your things because it's all the mayor's office that does it. I don't actually have any control or, um, we do not know. It's um, appointments are by the mayor and the uh, approval of the city council. So we don't have any anything to do with that. But nobody has been approved or appointed yet, to your knowledge. To my knowledge, speak now if you have, but I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is how uh, my application was acknowledged, and I was told that I would be contacted, and I'm standing by. I mean, I haven't been in touch with anybody. Okay, so. great. And I haven't applied yet because I wanted to attend a meeting first and see what it was like before and talk to Cassie a little more about what the responsibilities are before I applied. But. Excellent. Any questions we can answer for either of you? Um, Not at this point. Cassie was real helpful in sending me a bunch of links of hmm. uh, you know background responsibilities and authorities for the commission. I, and I've looked at that haven't committed it to memory. <laughs> That's acceptable. Yeah, so I'm, I'm good at this stage. Great. I'm curious, because um, I'm, I'm already on a couple, I'm on another committee and doing some other volunteer work I'd get off of to get on this one. And the other one I'm on, there's a lot of work and emails in between meetings, because we have a lot of projects we're working. I was just curious if this is, mainly like your responsibility is mainly to be at the meeting for and maybe read documents for the meeting but is there a lot of other stuff in between um no i would say that um other than reviewing documents in advance we're actually prohibited under open meeting law from discussing anything uh when we're not together in public so we can't we can't email back and forth with everybody on the list that's against the rules so that that certainly limits uh the, the time commitment i suppose maybe maybe we spend longer here but but uh other than our meeting nights um we're we're not allowed to discuss and deliberate yeah, the only outside meeting thing that I think is that you guys can participate in, but you don't even have to, is site visits. Would be site visits, yeah. yeah. Um, and site visits. Yeah. Um, go ahead, we can't, make the, we can't make decisions and talk about things at a site visit either, so. Correct, right. But you can you can go and see the sites. Um, lately, most of our site visits have been during the workday, which uh, makes it challenging for several of us to actually attend. But some people are able to attend. And um, if it's a particularly... Um, complicated site, we'll, we'll sometimes try to get there even if it is during the work day, but that's uh, not obligatory. And 
feel like there's something else I was going to say about that. But yeah, the commission doesn't take on projects, they review projects, I guess is the way that I would say it. Other than um, open space, which oh, is yeah. also our purview. So the, um, the Echo Dale West project that we were talking about this evening would be an open space project that would actually be our our project, except that um, we're looking to form an informal committee to help direct that so that it wouldn't be, um, so that it would move along faster, really. And so there's one vacancy right now, but I think we could also potentially take on an associate member. Does anyone have any? I can look into that deeper. I just don't know what the deals are. Have we ever had an associate member before? Don't we have two vacancies, Cassie? Oh, I thought it was one. I thought we were seven. Oh, no, you're right. There's two people missing tonight. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're correct. Um, but so even so, um, I think potentially we have we get the option to maybe have an associate member, but I don't know if that's something that the commission's ever done before. But I don't believe that we have. I don't believe we did that. All, yeah. All I know about it is that if we can't have it, it's just the person just can't vote, but they can right. come and they can speak to things and it's still helpful. So are we going to go back to when you said your email, yes, I'm attending, no, I can't attend. I can't remember what we did before. Oh, when it's in person? So <laughs> Yeah, like how yeah. we went about that. Yeah, it's I'll still so send, yeah. <laughs> I'll send an email a week before just with all the information and then telling you that the, hey, the meeting is coming. Um, and then all you do is just show up in person instead of going hopping on your computer. Um, and I'll bring a physical copy of everything, at least at least one physical copy of everything. Um, I guess too, if you guys want, you can bring your laptops. You can be looking at stuff on your laptop if you like. I don't know if anyone has capac capacity or want to do that, um, but uh, I think that that would be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still gonna do the minutes? Yeah, I'd still do them. I, I'm happy okay. to keep doing them. Yeah, because I think it's. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. When we were in person, it, it was someone else doing the minutes, but yeah. I, I certainly don't want to. Do I forgot all about that. Yes, Kathy, please, if you could do the minutes, that would be wonderful. It's, it's honestly, it's helpful for me because then I have, I take them physically as notes and then mm -hmm. type them up. Um, and that helps me remember the tasks that I need to do. So okay. I prefer to do it. I'll bring the candy, right? <laughs> All right, any other uh, comments, questions? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call vote, Commissioner Ryan? Aye. Commissioner August? Aye. Commissioner Whittemore? Aye. All right, it is 731 and we are uh, closing this meeting of the East Hampton Conservation Commission. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Uh, good right. night, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.